y'all. It's the morning of. Morning of the trip. We are flying out tonight at 10 p.m. to fly overnight. Tonight we're like leaving at 10 p.m. overnight to London, then London to Barcelona, which is only like a two hour flight, but the main one is eight hours. So that's what we're doing tonight. And we'll arrive to Barcelona by 3 p.m. One is either one, thirteen. I can't remember if it's thirteen or fifteen hundred, but it's either one or three p.m. We'll arrive to Barcelona. So right now I am packing. It is currently eleven ten right now, and I am not. I still got a lot to do. I still got to run to the store. So a few things on the to do list, but not too crazy. So should be okay. We'll see. But okay, so we are at the. We are at the airport. We're here with my mom. So she's, we're vlogging. So get used to it. The whole trip, it was really fast to get. The flight's not till 10, but we're here at seven. This plane was very old, but it was a moderately comfortable first flight to London. It was about eight hours, like I said, but there was no one sitting in the middle row between me. My mom is in the front row by the emergency exit. I gave her the extra leg room, so we made it the best we could. I do not like this plane. One out of five stars, very clustered, very confusing, and we didn't get the gate, we didn't show on the app or the website until like 10 minutes before boarding. And I'm just like, that gives me anxiety. Like, cause what if it's in a whole different part of the airport? I don't know this airport. So this is our flight leaves at 1.15 p.m. And we'll be arriving in Barcelona at 4.20 p.m. So last in the group to arrive, but it's cool. Just, uh. Ooh, if I look like I flew 10 hours, it's because I did. But we're here in Barcelona. Initial views of Barcelona, Spain was beautiful, very mountainous country, aesthetically pleasing. We made it to our Airbnb finally. It's a three bedroom Airbnb. Me and my mom were the last to arrive, so this is just a little snippet. This is the rest of the crew, some friends from college, and this is pretty much what it looks like in the living area. Going to dinner first night. Um, oh, oh, TV. Just old. So Gothic Quarter is one of the places in Barcelona that has a lot of palaces, houses, and Gothic churches from the medieval past of Barcelona. Our first eat of Barcelona is called Tapeo, located in Gothic Quarter, and it's just mainly known for its tapas. We all just ordered different tapas and just tried bits and pieces. There's different items. This is snail. I did end up trying it. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. ain't, ain't no secret to wash it down with either. No, it's no nasty, y'all. <laughs> she says it actually. Bottoms up. Ooh. After dinner, we did end up walking by a strip of bars. I love the aesthetics of the bars here in Barcelona. It just gives such a unique and refreshing feel. Oh, this is where, uh, where was it born? After the show, we headed back to get ready for the next day. So initial thoughts of Barcelona in the daytime, it gives like a clean New York vibe. I mean, it's urban, but they take care of their city and you can tell. So before we started our day, we had brunch at the Egg Lab and everything was good. This was my mimosa, it was hitting. This is different plate shots. And I had a French toast, five out of five stars, really good. So Casa Ballos is building in Barcelona, designed by a famous architect, Antoni Gaudi, and it's one of the famous masterpieces and a must-see. We at Casa Ballo for Gandhi, 
and we're actually gonna do reservations for it versus going to it because there's a really long queue you gotta wait in. So we're gonna do the hop on, hop off bus until our time of 2.30. Right now it's like 11.30. So we're gonna do hop on, hop off for about two hours and then go to the park, Park Gill and then hit up McDonald's. I wanna try McDonald's um, while we're here. They're decorating for Christmas. So, some stores that's right here. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's the queue for it. It's a pretty long line, so we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna wait. So here we are on the hop on hop off bus and it's definitely one of the most convenient easiest ways to see the main attractions in a city and this is one of the stops of course at La Sagrada Familia. We're not going to see it till tomorrow but still very beautiful to see it first. We hopped off on one of the stops to see Park Gale which was on our itinerary but it was such a far walk and we missed it. I'm going to Sire Park uh, Guel because we got reservations for 12.15 and it is now 12.50. Have a look at this. We had a hard time getting here. We had to walk after getting off the bus about what, 10 minutes. So, when we got here, we booked through a third company and this entrance. So, we have to go around the opposite side of the park to go in, which is a 25 minute walk. So, I don't care enough to do that. And then we have reservations for Casa Batlo. So, we're gonna miss that if we try to get inside the park. It's just too rushed, it's too much walking. It's not worth it. So I think we're just gonna try and get a refund for the reservation and then just take the taxi back to Batlow, call it a day. I did wanna jump in and clarify anything. We were going to kill time to go to Park Gale, which is another main attraction while waiting on our a lot of slot at Casa Batlo. So that's why we hopped on the hop on hop off bus to go see to the park and go back to Casa Batlo before our appointed time. Fortunately, we missed the time slot that we had for the park. So we didn't have time to go to the different area that they were trying to get us to go to, to enter the park, to not miss the Casa Batlo as well. So we unfortunately did not get to see the park, but I just want to hop on here and say, um, always plan for any discrepancies in your itinerary or any type of you know confusion that could possibly happen especially in a city that is predominantly walking and you don't really speak the language like that so just plan for anything that could possibly go wrong so you don't miss out on time and money but i like to try chips from different countries so this is a patatas fritas sabor bacon and queso bacon and cheese chips <laughs> yeah, I'm so I don't think they're nasty. I don't like the smell. It's, oh. it's bacon and cheese. Eat it. You already committed. First reaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. That's the wrong type of bacon grease. It's that it's the it's the uh, salad bacon. It's the smell that's so Yeah. I can't. Imani looking like she got a whiff of my breath. Oh, okay. Yeah. Imani on the Smell of cotton. Peach. No. This is not the peach. That is? That's how you say it in normal Spanish too? I guess I never asked for a peach before. So back at Casa Batlo, they give you this remote that explains different parts of the house and the architect in here was phenomenal. Casa Batlo, this is what it looks like outside. This is the balcony. Mm -hmm. One type of balcony. This is actually less crowded than it was when we first 
came to make our reservation. And there isn't a detail spared. You do all this work just to die. And <laughs> Uh, all this work he put in it. The house was originally built in 1877 by Cortez, one of Gaudi's architectural professors, then was purchased in 1903 by Mr. Joseph Botlow, which is why it's named Casa Botlow. The house is intricately designed. There's details in every inch of this house. I definitely recommend coming if you come to Barcelona, but please make sure you come early. Tickets are about $35 to $38. As much money as I owe on this one, I might as well upgrade. Al dentro. Al dentro. Al dentro. I think that's how it goes. Ella. Pasa dentro. Pasa dentro. Al dentro. Ah, centro y adentro. We then went to the Moco Museum, which is also located in Gothic Quarter, and it is a contemporary and modern art museum and definitely worth a visit. Tickets were about 16 to 17 euros, and it's packed with different types of paintings, sculptures, art pieces, beautiful, everything about it was beautiful. You cannot go to Barcelona and not get paella, so we went to the restaurant with the best paella in town. So this is in the last clip. Oh, by the way, we had dinner, so it's time for paella. We had siete portes, siete portes, which is a restaurante with seafood. Um, but I meant to mention that Spanish is not really a thing here. It is called Catalan, Catalan, Catarina. One of the two. It's like a Romance language mixed with Latin, Italian, and Spanish. And it's only spoken in Barcelona and a little bit south. So I thought that was pretty interesting for someone to know. If you think you know Spanish or speak Spanish, I am a semi-native speaker. And I say semi-native because I grew up speaking Spanish at home, but I grew up in the United States. My family is from Panama. You will not understand Catalan. You pick up a couple words, but you will not know the language. So this concludes part one of Bucket List Diaries Barcelona. And yes, they did have the best paella. Oh my God, it was so good. Stay tuned for part two.